Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and today we're going to be talking about first animals on planet Earth. And more specifically this recent study that came out not so long ago that suggests a discovery of what seems to be the first animal life on Earth but discovered in fossils that were approximately 890 million years old, which seems to predate some of the other fossils by roughly around 350 million years, and also creates a few problems. But assuming all of this is correct, it also presents a really interesting opportunity in helping us understand how life could evolve on other planets as well. Now, first of all, in this case, we really are focusing only on animal life, not just any life in general. Which of course means that we have to have some sort of a definition for what an animal is. And I guess according to most modern definitions, an animal, or a metazoa as it's also known, is defined as a multicellular and also eukaryotic organism that generally requires a lot of organic matter to survive and also generally requires oxygen to breathe as well. While also being able to move, sexually reproduce and go through certain stages of development usually during the early stages when the body develops into a sort of a spherical shape with a somewhat hollow sphere on the inside that eventually develops into the body parts and a lot of other cavities that will then serve different functions. Although I guess, to be honest, there's still no good one definition that applies to all animals on Earth. Nevertheless, there's at least one type of an animal that's always been really interesting to scientists, mostly because it's believed to be one of the earliest animals on the planet. The organisms known as Porifera, also known as sponges. And although these organisms technically do not have all of the animal functions, they're still believed to be the ancestors of common animals today and often do possess very similar features to a typical animal. And so that's sort of the organism we're discussing today. The organism whose true origin is not really well known, mostly because of their soft nature. They don't really preserve well inside fossils. But it's always been believed that they're at least 540 million years old. And just like other animal types, they also breathe oxygen, they also need a lot of organic matter to survive, and to some extent many do move as well. Although generally speaking, it's really only the juvenile sponges that are able to move. Once they become adults, they sort of turn into the structures whose main purpose is to move water around in order to absorb as much matter as possible. Although because there is so much diversity when it comes to sponges, it would be very difficult to explain all of their differences in a single video. All you have to remember is that sponges are very complex and they do seem to resemble early animal life, with some of them even having the ability to produce a rudimentary skeleton, a skeleton that does vary quite a lot. But this could hypothetically get preserved in the fossil record. And this is exactly what the scientists might have discovered in some of the ancient fossils coming out of Canada. First though, well, a little bit of personal history. I remember when I was traveling in Canada early on, I discovered that a lot of different buildings were made out of this really beautiful rock formation. A rock formation known as the Tyndall Stone. Here's a crest from the University of Saskatchewan with one of the patterns represented in the rock itself. With the stone itself becoming relatively popular back in the days in producing all sorts of unique looking structures. For example, here's what this looks like on the Canadian Museum of Civilization and here's what this looks like on the famous hotel in Victorian British Columbia known as the Empress. With probably the most famous example being the Parliament Hill located in Ottawa in Canada. And so what all of these buildings have in common is the presence of Tyndall Stone. And though originally when I first saw it I just thought it looked beautiful and had no idea how it was made. With the first assumption being that it was probably some sort of a chemical reaction, eventually I realized that the unique look of these stones comes from the huge amount of different fossils present inside the rock itself. With all sorts of cephalopods, trilobites, corals, all sorts of different sponges and everything in between present inside the rocks. These are actually some of the most fossiliferous rocks on the planet. Something that was formed in ancient lakes and ancient seas that existed in northern Canada that eventually disappeared, leaving behind nothing but ancient fossils. And it just so happens that many of these rocks also contain the signs of this right here, what seems to be the oldest animal on the planet. And so the signs of this ancient animal that was discovered in the paper in the description below were also present in the Tyndo stone that was found somewhere in Canada. But let's go back to the idea of ancient animals. Today, if you were to look up the oldest animal on the planet, or if you were to go to a major museum that specializes in ancient history, for the most part you'll hear the same story. The vast majority of all animals on the planet very likely started during the so-called Cambrian Explosion. 
Cambrian explosion refers to the time approximately 550 million years ago when animals like this, the famous Animalocaris, or essentially ancient shrimp, were dominating the oceans and were essentially the kings of the world. But when it comes to the oldest animal on the planet, most scientists agree that it was probably the fossil of this animal right here known as Dickinsonia, something that probably looked like this. And not so long ago it was discovered that there was some sort of a cholesterol present inside this animal, providing necessary molecular evidence to suggest that this was indeed an ancient animal. An animal that existed approximately 558 million years ago, with some other suggestions coming from Australia, possibly finding similar animals approximately 600 million years ago. And so there's no actual agreement on the timeline itself, but it's always believed to be approximately 500 to maybe 600 million years ago. But could animal life, even sponge life, exist before that? Well, the majority of scientists today still believe that the answer is no, for one simple reason. It's believed that for millions of years, Earth has gone through several stages of what's known as the snowball Earth. Essentially, there was ice everywhere, and it would be very difficult for typical animal life to survive in these conditions. There are suggestions that maybe some sponges did survive this, but it's not clear how they did so. At the same time, approximately 800 million years ago, Earth was also extremely low in oxygen. And since animal life requires oxygen to survive, it's always been believed that prior to about 800 million years ago, no animal life was possible at all. And so approximately 800 million years ago, the event known as the New Proteozoic Oxygenation Event suddenly introduced the oxygen that might have actually helped life evolve. But until that point, it was always believed that life was just very primitive, possibly algae, simple bacteria, and possibly some other simple multicellular life, but not animals. Or at least that's what the scientists believed for a very long time. But this newly discovered fossil seems to contradict all of this. And specifically based on these signs of what seems to be some sort of a skeletal structure, the author in the paper does suggest that animal life might have existed approximately 890 million years ago, predating other sponges by about 350 million years. But can this assumption be made simply based on what we see in the rock right here? Because remember, this is just morphology. It could still be formed in some natural way through a chemical reaction. Which is actually the main argument that is being made right now against this discovery. And we're not going to know exactly what this is for quite a while now, until further analysis or until other samples are found as well. What we can actually do now is try to speculate how this could be possible. Could animal life really survive on Earth 890 million years ago? And if it did survive there, how did it do it? How was it able to survive in extremely cold conditions of glacial earth and also in the extremely low oxygen conditions as well? Well, interestingly enough, the explanation for this makes a lot of sense. It's quite possible that these ancient sponges coexisted with a lot of other algae that was present in the area that's been definitively identified in a lot of these fossils as well. And this coexistence of sponges along with a lot of algae that probably lived here very likely created these sort of like oases of oxygen and various habitable conditions present in somewhat tiny pockets on the planet. Places filled with a lot of early life diversity that were probably absent in a lot of other regions on the planet. And one of the main reasons I personally find this discovery extremely exciting is actually in regards to our search for extraterrestrial life somewhere on the moon or a planet elsewhere out there. So the suggestion here is that a lot of these sponges probably lived underneath these very large reef-like formations formed by various types of bacteria and various types of algae that were creating oxygen in just this region here. And these tiny pockets possibly existed for millions of years, allowing these sponges to survive and to possibly even thrive in these tiny pockets. And they could have done so for millions of years, not even needing to evolve anything because the conditions weren't changing very much. If the Earth was frozen, at least for the most part, but these tiny pockets remained possibly ice-free or provided some kind of a light for photosynthetic life, it would have been enough for all of these sponges to survive there for a very, very long time. Implying that for at least a few hundred million years, the Earth itself was probably the world of sponges and the world of algae. With these early sponges very likely being on top of the food chain and possibly playing an important biological role as well. But I guess what's really unusual here is that they seem to have existed approximately 9 million years before we thought it was possible for these animals to exist. 
before a major oxygenation event on the planet. And there is more supporting evidence to all of this as well. It's not just the morphology or the fact that this resembles a skeleton of a modern sponge. Some of the evidence comes from the DNA of some of the ancient organisms as well. Assuming that DNA evolves at a somewhat constant rate within different organisms, there seems to be some evidence to suggest that the animal DNA might have evolved much prior to the Cambrian explosion that I mentioned previously. And although there is still a chance that all of this was produced through some sort of a chemical reaction or possibly just a result of some sort of an algae or other multicell organism that seems to create similar structures, if this was indeed some sort of an early sponge or early animal life, it would then help us understand how life could potentially evolve on some other planet somewhere out there, or even a moon like Europa or Enceladus. As a matter of fact, this is exactly what a lot of astrobiologists believe we might one day find on some other planet or moon. The animal life that would kind of resemble a typical sponge on planet Earth. Which is why I'm personally really excited to see where all of this goes and what the scientists discover about these fossils in some of the future studies. But I guess until we learn more, or until an actual animal life is discovered somewhere out there, that's all I wanted to mention in this video. Check out the relevant links and all of the relevant studies in the description below. Subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who has learned about space and sciences, and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else. Maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.